Hello to all of my friends. Welcome to another adventure. Today's adventure is going to be a nice, cool, relaxing trip. Starting here in Chicago, the very beginning of the historic Route 66. We're gonna be taking Route 66, or as much of the original road as we can, all the way to Tulsa, Oklahoma. So here we are in Chicago at the very beginning of Route 66 heading westbound. There's the Route 66 sign. It's the very beginning of Route 66 called the Mother Road and we're headed now. everybody so here we are just off ogden avenue uh again that's old route 66. the first attraction that we've stopped at here is the old castle uh tower car wash this was or originally built in 1925 and the reason this car wash was famous is because it was actually kind of a hideout that al capone would use so if he was looking for a safe house or a place to kind of escape to if he needed to or if he wanted to have a private meeting they would use uh, this car wash as that location. So uh, this uh, or this business is no longer open. It's not a car wash anymore. Uh, everything shows that it's closed. Uh, looks like they might be using it some type of garage or maybe a storage location, but it is a very cool building. I mean, look at that turret. That's actual stone too. So this thing was built to last for sure. It's very cool. So there it is, the Castle Car Wash. Built in 1925 off the Old Mother Road. And here we are gonna move on to our next stop, guys. We will see you then. All right, here we are, guys, at our next stop here along Route 66. This is Henry's. This is a hot dog stand, basically, that was created in the 1950s. It started out as a hot dog wagon. He would have a little cart out here and would sell hot dogs eventually built it up into this little restaurant that has been here again since the 1950s as you can see it's a nice little quaint place it is still open unfortunately it's not open right now it doesn't open until till until 10 30 and uh, it's only a little 9 30 right here so uh, we're not going to be sticking around to eat here unfortunately many other stops to go to but wanted to make sure we checked it out so this is henry's awesome little place very cool sign right off Route 66. So off to our next stop. Hello everyone, well we're back to our next stop here uh, along Route 66. This is the McCook, Illinois sign. Uh, this sign was actually put up here by the mayor in 2013 right off Route 66 to bring attention to McCook. Uh, as you can see, you probably can't see it in the video too well, but just underneath the Illinois sign in there, it's really faded, is the uh, original mayor's name still on there. It's just uh, faded out or like just taken out. So uh, apparently he's not the mayor anymore. But this, So this isn't a really old sign. It was up in 2013, but it is a historic sign that it, it, it worked. It brought a lot of attention to people to McCook. So there's the famous Las Vegas looking sign for McCook, Illinois. Also, the little restaurant here down below it, if you have time, uh, stop by and check it out. Uh, let's see if I can get in close enough for the name. The Steak and Egger. Uh, they're, they're known for good food, but they're, what they're really known for is their grilled cheese. I guess they have a very uh, interesting menu for different types of grilled cheese. Um, so if you're here at the sign and looking for a quick meal, uh, check it out. Otherwise, keep on going down Route 66, which is what we're going to be doing. On to our next stop. Talk to you guys soon. What we have here is the Joliet, very own Kicks on 66th Street. This is an ice cream shop that originally, uh, before it was an ice cream shop, was actually the office for a mobile home park. 
that was built in 1965 originally and if you look to the left there you're going to see this kind of this big open park area so you can kind of get an idea where they probably had the mobile homes but all the way down through there you can see they have route 66 historical stuff all in this little park here it's actually kind of nice and this became an ice cream shop in 1972 and it's been the ice cream shop ever since and if you can see at the very top there you got none other than the blues brothers putting on a show so if you're ever in this area and you want to check get some nice ice cream and see a historical landmark on route 66 come and check it out now just down the road from here is another roadside attraction and uh, we're gonna go check that out now all right folks we're here at Dick's on 66 now Dick's towing which is just right up the street here I'll just show you right here there's Dick's towing but this is the little roadside attraction. Now this uh, little garage actually was built in 1934 and it was originally a little cafe and a curio. Uh, they eventually added a gas pump and um, started selling gas and then uh, providing some additional services. And then eventually just became a garage. And uh, this is where things sit today. Got some really cool old vehicles up there. It's got California or bust. On the car on top there, that's kind of cool. Squad 54. It's an old Plymouth. It's pretty cool. This will make a perfect rat rod. Wouldn't do anything to it. Just uh, throw a really nice clear coat on it and go about your business. That's cool. So they got the old radio and everything in it. And of course, there's where the bad guys sat. Not much protection for the driver. Yeah, and back here you can see where the garage eventually became. Got an old Dodge truck. You know, farm truck. More of a heavy, heavy duty model. My guess is that's probably late 50s, early 60s. Take a look at this. I love the interiors of old trucks. So, yeah, it looks like the bed on this one uh, starting to show a little bit of sign of dry rot, you know. Not much, but it's, they're probably going to want to throw a coat of some stain on it and some varnish. But, uh, yeah. And you guys can see here, you're looking at Route 66 right here. And it's, it's actually quite busy uh, so far. Now, we're, we're just now getting outside of Joliet. We're heading over to the prison. But uh, we want to stop and check this out. So there's Dick's on 66, established in 1934, along Route 66. So on to the next stop. All right, everybody. I got bad news. I'm going to prison. So write me some letters and uh, let me know what's going on in the outside world. We're at Joliet Prison, guys. If you want to know a little bit more about the history, uh, especially the paranormal history on this, you can check out my video I did uh, on the International Yard Hunters Association's Facebook page. Uh, I did a whole video on this prison, on the different guests here, the paranormal history. However, Joliet Prison has a very uh, strong history of paranormal activity and uh, some uh, famous prisoners. I'm not going to go into all that today be just because I don't have that kind of time i'm gonna go inside this prison though i'm gonna take a quick tour take a look inside and let's see what we can see all right there's a shot of the prison what's fascinating about this prison is it was built in the early 1900s and they continued using this prison up until modern times uh, i can't imagine i guess we're gonna find out here shortly but i can't imagine how bad the conditions may have been uh, 
for staff and prisoners. But, uh, you know, prison's not supposed to be pleasant, um, to be honest. But uh, you can tell just by the look at this building, it's, it's very old. It has a very creepy feel to it. So let's, uh, we gotta walk around to the other side, come into the east entrance, the east gate, as they call it. And uh, yeah, we're gonna go and see what this is like. All right, guys, what we're looking at here is a uh, sign, obviously, and it's talking about the industries of the Joliet prison. I'm not gonna go through, read all of this in this video here, but basically, O Joliet prisons, 1,404 convicts, uh, at the time uh, that they started uh, creating these industries within the prison uh, did all kinds of things they made everything as you can see from the pictures here as far as you know furniture looks like we have some concrete moldings down here looks like they're making some leather works and shoes there's also a barber and obviously some more work here down here you can see where they're making toys. Uh, now basically the science is talking about how uh, when they originally started creating these industries within the prison, there was a lot of objections as far as using prisoners uh, for industry because they weren't paid. Uh, they felt like it was more like forced slave labor. Um, eventually though, down here towards the bottom, it talks about the progressive administration of Warden Edmund Allen who introduced the uh, honor system in 1914 uh, and basically uh, for making furniture, mattresses and other mass products, um, they were able to earn a wage uh, because of that. And what we're looking at here behind here is one of the industry buildings. Now this one looks like it's more of the superintendent's offices. Now it's been burnt down it looks like, some fire damage there. Uh, but as you walk down here, there's another building uh, just right here this is another industry building and we'll get an idea of kind of what that looked like now we're not able to enter the building because again this looks like it suffered from some fire damage as well there is a lot of construction going on here looks like they're doing a lot of rehab um, but it's like an old office area see some old office furniture and stuff in here granted it could be storage for all I know but that's pretty cool look at that old printer and the old computers these are really old I'm sure they didn't have that in the early 1900s um, and actually this prison was built in the late 1800s uh, here is an, another industry building here to the left and you kind of get a general idea of the prison layout. It's like there's quite a bit of fire damage here, like in multiple buildings. This, this sign reads here, the old Joliet prison finally closed on February 16, 2002. Largely the site remained in good condition until the early morning hours of July 25, 2013 when a fire erupted around 3 a.m. Later ruled to be an arson, the fire destroyed the automotive shop adjacent to the east Sally Port. As flames leapt over the wall adjacent to Collins Street, the Joliet Fire Department was able to gain access to the inside of the prison walls to extinguish the fire. And as you can see, these are just pictures of a lot of the burnt out offices and areas. So there was a big fire here. Unfortunately, it was arson. Um, so that might explain a lot of the construction work around here. They, uh, they just recently won a preservation award, it looks like. And there is a, like I said, a lot of construction in place to rehab this area. And here where we are is this is one of the mattress factory so this is the so the prison was built in 1858 is when this prison was built 
and from 1870 to 1895, female inmates were held on the fourth floor of the administration building and were only allowed out of the building once a year, the 4th of July. Once the men were confined to their cells, the women marched out to the courtyard, allowed to circle the, the cistern, then returned to their quarters. In 1895, the warden passed a new regulation that allowed women to leave their dormitory on Sunday afternoons in addition to their 4th of July. So you can see the women here This is what they were allowed to do one time a year. Get out and walk around this. That's crazy. And this is uh, what you saw in the picture there. The women would climb up the stairs here. They were marched out and they would climb these stairs and get to the top and walk around the outside of this. And over here to the right, this building here, this is what was a mattress factory. So you see the building back behind there where they made mattresses. So, very old prison. It's amazing to me that this prison stayed active up until the 2000s. This prison was built in 1858. That's crazy. So now we're gonna be walking into some of the buildings. Some of these, I don't remember which, I'm sure there'll be some signs or something in here, but let's take a look. These seem to be some office buildings of some sort. Look at these walls. Man, that's cool. 1858. Some more Australians. What's in here? So this is a bathroom. It's like maybe a storage room or a light. They said that one of these was a library. Maybe this was a library. But I kind of get a feeling it's more office. Old coat hangers. Think about the people who wore the coats that hung up here. This, my guess is was maybe some message box. Everybody was maybe assigned something and you put their their mail and stuff in here. Another room back here. I gotta tell you, even if I wasn't a prisoner, and with somebody who walk, worked here. It would be very bleak. All right, so let's check out some other things. There it is, guys. This is where it all happened. The prison courtyard. This is the area the inmates would get to come outside and get a little sun. You can almost picture it, you know? Just like over there, it may have been an old basketball court. You can see the hoops. There's a baseball diamond, see the, the back fence there? So you can imagine. Hundreds and hundreds, thousand inmates out here playing baseball, walking around the yard, talking, sitting on the ground, thinking about life, maybe thinking about the mistakes they made that got them here, maybe thinking about plotting revenge for the people who put them in here. I mean, who knows? You know? How many fights were in this courtyard? How many people got shanked in this courtyard? And you can see the, uh, the tower over there in the distance, keeping a watchful eye of the prison prisoners. Now, for those of you who have never been to Joliet Prison here in Joliet, Illinois, so you're aware, as you can see, I'm just walking freely through the prison. 
they do offer guided tours and it's self-guided tours. Now there's lots of the prison here, lots of the area of the prison here that we can't go into that you normally can because of all the construction and rehabbing that they're doing. Looks like we could maybe go into the machine shop right up ahead here. So let's go check. Let's go check this out. Check this out, guys. Look at these old tables. How many prisoners sat right there? Who were they? What crimes did they commit that put them here? How many games of chess and checkers and poker? You know what? I'm going to be one of these guys. I'm going to sit in this chair and sit at this table here. Look at this. How many games of checkers were here? Chess. Guys just sitting here smoking a cig, talking about what they're gonna do when they get out. It's pretty fascinating. All right, so let's go check out the machine shop. Hey guys, we're gonna enter the machine shop here. At least I think so. Maybe not. I don't know how far we can get in here. Nope, it's locked. Let's take a look down there. It looks like they're doing some construction in there. So there's some rehab work going on in here too. Pretty cool. I'm gonna snap some pictures in some of these areas here just to see if anything gets picked up. All right, everyone. Well, we are here on Route 66 in Wilmington. And unfortunately, uh, I guess all good things come to an end. Uh, the landing pad or the launching pad restaurant uh, that was host for the Gemini Giant uh, appears to be closing or closed. And I don't know if they're going to remodel it or if they're condemning it, but it's all taped off. You can't even get to the restaurant and the Gemini Giant has been removed. I found online, it looks like the last entry I saw in March was uh, the local museum or historical society bought the giant and are going to be moving him down the road. I'd say it's probably no more than a couple of miles down the road from the launching pad. It's literally right before the uh, Conkey River, uh, the uh, National Water Trail. So there's a bridge that crosses the river. Just before that, on the left-hand side, you're going to see this sign. That is until the Gemini Giant is put in place. So it looks like the future home of Gemini Giant is going to be right here. So, well, I can't get a picture of the Gemini Giant, but I can get a picture of where it's gonna be. So for all of you who are planning your trip to Route 66, don't bother going to the launching pad to see the Gemini Giant. You're going to want to keep, if you're heading west, keep heading down the road a couple of miles. And on the left-hand side, you won't miss it. it this uh, park here is right off uh, 66, as you can hear from all the traffic. So anyway, that's it. On to the next attraction. Folks, I found him. Elvis lives. There he is, Elvis Presley. And right over here next to me is none other then the lovely, beautiful, Miss Marilyn Monroe. Say hello, Marilyn. And then the coolest of the cool, the man with all the swag, Mr. James Dean. Hey, James, how's it going, man? Unfortunate about the Porsche. And then the lovely Americana herself, Miss Betty Boo. 
There we are, folks. Star Stud Attractions. Elvis Presley. Marilyn Monroe. James Dean. Betty Boop. But wait. There's more. All right. Here we are in Gardner, Illinois uh, on Route 66. As you can see here, this is the Gartner Two Cell Gel. Now, I did some earlier research on this a little while ago. Don't have all the facts 100% in my head. However, I do know that this is what they called a hobo gel. Uh, there used to be a railroad yard, or maybe it still is, over here. And you would have transients come into the community, get a little rowdy, maybe get a little, uh, get into grandpa's cough syrup, so to speak. A little too much of it. And so, to keep them from causing problems in their community, they had this little two cell gel uh, that was established. And this is in the early 1900s, I believe. Uh, something else I thought was fascinating after I got here was this little memorial. I started reading it and I thought, you know what? This man absolutely deserves to be recognized. The name of this gentleman is Reverend Christian Christensen. 1859 to 1947. Here's a picture of the man. Now, what's really interesting about this is during World War II, Germany was uh, trying to uh, build and create what they call hard water. And I believe hard water was going to be used or was needed for them to build um, their atomic bomb or some of their super weapons that they were looking to build. And they knew that Germany had these plants in Europe to produce hard water but they didn't know where they were and this man who lived in Gartner Illinois uh, but originally from uh, uh, Nor uh, he was Norwegian so he's from Norway he knew where the Germans had one of these hard water plants because he was from there and so he had reached out to the US Army and told them that he could point them in a direction where this plant was so he literally had top brass of World War II come here to Gartner to his home with maps and they rolled out the maps on the table and this gentleman was able to point out the locations of these hard water plants which allowed the Army Air Corps to bomb the shit out of them and prevent the Germans from being able to produce hard water which would have eventually led to an atomic bomb and who knows eventually led to uh, the destruction of the world. Up here in the upper left hand corner, this is a letter that was uh, written um, from the ambassador of Norway to Reverend Christensen, who basically is saying that uh, his majesty is basically thanking him for his invaluable service, not only to Norway, but to the world. Uh, so what a fascinating story that this man actually made a massive contribution to saving, who knows, hundreds of thousands of lives uh, simply by volunteering his help and his knowledge of Norway. So I thought that was pretty fascinating. But let's go over here and take a look at this two-sided or two-cell gel. And not much to it. Built in 1906. And there it is. Two-cell gel. Now if memory serves, they called it a hobo gel, like I said, because of transients. So they would Pretty much have them sleep here overnight, sleep it off basically, and then send them on their way the next day. <laughs> there we go. Let's take a walk in here. How many men spent time here? Of course, you got a little table here, chair, a little fireplace. Yeah, so pretty cool, pretty uh, amazing little piece of history. Got the old school radio there. That's really cool. So some uh, get out of jail free pass card to go directly to jail. That's cool. And of course we signed our name here. So there we go. There's the two cell gel. That's uh. On Route 66. Route 66 is actually just right over there. It curves and goes down this direction. So it's just literally right down the road from Route 66. It's at the corner of Mason and Center. So 
there we go on to the next attraction all right here also in Gardner you're gonna find the Riviera Roadhouse this is a little uh, streetcar diner uh, that was uh, set up here uh, and it provided years and years of, of food and entertainment and you know social atmosphere for the local community it was originally owned by the Crafts family uh, and then this uh, this uh, memory of this plaque or uh, memorial here is just thanking the Kraft family for all the, the the nostalgia and the memories they provided the community. Now the original streetcar diner that was here burnt down uh, back in uh, 2010. Uh, this streetcar was donated and then uh, rebuilt uh, to look exactly as the original. Uh, so let's go take a quick look here. Oh, let's get a nice young man in there willing to take your orders like you got some uh, breakfast ready to go there and uh, so they got a blue plate special for 35 cents meat potatoes and veggies bread coffee and soup fresh pies every day open 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. imagine the community people coming in and sitting down maybe some visitors from the train station pretty cool all right, so on to the next one. Chicago area and kind of through Juliet there's a lot more signage uh, a lot more uh, a lot of historical markers along the way there are there is painting on the road showing you route 66 uh, so there's a little bit better guide of how to stay along route 66 once you get through Chicago and Juliet um, not a whole lot in Chicago, uh, really. The main thing is you have to go downtown uh, and then you head west on Adams Street uh, from like Lake Drive. Um, I think it's Michigan and Adams is the, the actual corner, if I remember correctly. But um, you just drive west on Adams, that is Route 66. But it can be a little confusing to know where you are. But once you get outside of Juliet, so far, there's been pretty decent signage and markers to kind of keep you on the right track. So, this is something you have to look forward to uh, if you're going to make this journey. Um, Route 66, uh, most of the ways, at least on the East Coast, follows along I-55. As you saw in my earlier video, it's right beside us. The other thing you'll notice is uh, along Route 66 is a, a set of railroad tracks, usually, that kind of follows along with it. Uh, Route 66 is often named uh, a frontage road or uh, Old Chicago Road. Uh, it's also known as a business loop or Alternative 55. So there's a lot of different names that it goes by today. Um, but like I said, the roads that we're on right now actually have pretty good signage uh, as far as where Route 66 is. All right, we're here at our next stop here in Dwight, Illinois, right off Route 66. This is an old Texaco gas station that was built in 1936. As you can see, it's open. A lot of times, most of the videos I've seen, it's never been open. So the fact that it is, and we can go check it out, is really cool. 
So let's uh, go take a look at what we got here. Got some old cars here. It's like a little old car show, a little meetup. I don't know if that's a Tucker or a Hudson. That's a Tucker, I think. Oh, this is really cool. Now, my family, when I was young, back in my hometown, we operated a couple of Texacos. I remember as a little kid, real little, but I remember being there. So this is kind of cool. This is really cool. Let's see uh, the gentleman there sitting there waiting to uh, clean your windows and fill up your tank. Oh, this is neat. This is cool. Let's see what we got here. It's an old fire truck. Oh yeah. Yeah, I pumped the gas up into the nineteen fourteen Model T Ford. Chemical engine. First motorized fire engine yes. for Dwight. Yeah, the in there. Those old serpentine, oh, those old belts. Off sure belts. One of those uh, look at these old uh, Chilton's manuals. That's cool. Yes. Yeah. Oh, air compressor. This is neat. Like, this little gas station is like you could bring a car in here and service it right now. That's kind of cool. Some old gas tanks. That's pretty interesting. Amber Becker, Texaco Station, Dwight, Illinois, built in 1933. It was the longest operating service gas station to pump gas on the historic Route 66. So these were the last fully operational gas pumps for this gas station off Route 66. That's really, really cool. All right. We're going to sign the guest book here and uh, we're going to move on to our next uh, location. Hey folks, so we're here in the Route 66 Museum here in Pontiac um, and there is just a ton of history of Route 66. What they have like Hall of Fame cabinets here. With people who have made different contributions, businesses, people who have made the Route 66 Hall of Fame. This is fantastic American history. And over here is Bob Walmart. He is a man who basically brought Route 66 to life. A lot of the murals painted along Route 66 were done by Bob. Uh, what's significant about the Cozy Dogs is Bob's family uh, founded the Cozy Dogs. And uh, it started in um, 
it's in Springfield, Illinois, and it's still open to this day. And the hope is that we will be eating some corn dogs from there tonight. And this is a picture of Bob. He's the artist, and we're going to see more about Bob here shortly. And here is a mural. Someone to drive all way up to Chicago. There's the Gemini man who wasn't there, but will be later. And this is Bob Walmart's 1972 VW van. Now Bob drove up and down Route 66 for most of his life. Uh, he loved the history of it, and he was trying to bring the the history of Route 66, the importance of that history, to the public eye. And it was, to his credit, a lot of his work, a lot of his publicity, a lot of his art that brought the focus back to Route 66 and has people like myself from all over the world traveling Route 66. And so this is his van. This is what he traveled in, slept in. You can see he's got just an unbelievable amount of items that he collected and people he met. And see his little bed that he slept on there. This is amazing. He drove this thing all up and down Route 66. There's newspaper articles of Bob. This is awesome. Yeah, license plates going all the way back to nineteen eleven. Starting up there. And all the way. This is crazy. This is so amazing. There is too much here to even possibly go over in this video. So, this is amazing. What a great homage to Route 66 and its history and the people that this interstate affected. Here are pictures paving. Route 66 is one of the first like U.S. highways that was paved that went east and west. I believe it was in 1926 that it started. So, there's some of the hard men who built, who built Route 66. There's just too much to cover. Chester Henry and his trooper days. It's like he's it's like an old Pontiac, maybe an Olsenville. I think they have something like that here. This is amazing. Guys, there's just too much for me to go uh, to go through here. There's no way I can show you all this. But uh, so if you're in Pontiac, you got to stop and check this place out. So I had to show you this. I was walking by and in the War Museum, they have an a, an exhibit of life on the Titanic. 
these are all actual pieces from the Titanic. Crewman hat. There's the old White Star Lines flag. This is incredible. 1,500 people died. This is awesome. This is the luggage of Miss Charlotte W. Condiza, a wealthy first class passenger who boarded the Titanic. This is her picture. these are her items that was on the Titanic it's incredible silverware dishes from the Titanic Someone's journal. Wow, this is crazy. More clothes from this is Alicta Axelina Consta Constanzia Ergo. Wow, this is incredible. And what we have here is the Bob Waldmeyer Road Yacht. This is a bus that he built, along with some help, obviously. There's pictures of them building it. Here's the bus when he first bought it. And uh, yeah, we're about to go check it out. Here it is. Here is the bus that he drove, just like his VW, all up and down. Route 66, chronicling Route 66 through painting, through his interviews. This man's life and passion was telling the story of Route 66. So let's go check out this behemoth here. signs from all of the states along Route 66. Texas, Arizona, Kansas, New Mexico, Oklahoma, Illinois, Missouri. It's all really cool.
so here we are at our next stop the famous cozy drive-in or cozy dogs uh, this establishment was originally built in 1946 right on route 66 i think it was on 6th avenue uh, since then the location moved here in 1996 uh, this restaurant was originally founded by ed um, Walkmire, which was bob's uh, father his father and mother ran this establishment up until their death uh, and uh, we're here to uh, get some great food and uh, it's really good. I mean the corn dogs are great. You can tell they use fresh oil. They're not overcooked. They're nice and crunchy on the outside, soft on the inside. I mean for a corn dog they're actually really really good. Uh, they have like home style fries. They also have a really big menu and the interior of the restaurant is uh, just adorable. So if you get a chance to stop by here, here is the location. As you can see, it's a very simple uh, little corn dog place called Cozy Dogs. It does have a drive through and it's not super expensive, honestly. I think we got a meal of four, con four corn dogs and a large fry. It's a very large fry and two large drinks and it was just around 20 bucks, which really isn't bad when you consider uh, the amount of food that you get. I mean, the drinks are huge, the fries are huge, and the corn dogs are delicious. So, this is here in Springfield, Illinois. Uh, and if you have a chance to swing by this location, you should definitely check it out because it does have a special connection to Bob uh, Walgmeyer and his family, uh, considering they started. And it is a very, a very important historical uh, stop if you are a fan of Route 66. So with that, fellas, ladies, we are going to be heading uh, to where we're staying the night, which is in uh, Eureka, Missouri. And then from there, we will get up in the morning and then we'll finish the second leg uh, going into Tulsa. So until then, we will talk to you guys later. Hello, everyone. And we are at our next stop and we are here at the famous Wagon Wheel Motel. If you do any research ever about Route 66 and roadside attractions, I guarantee you this will be one of them on the list and one of the tops on the list. First of all, this is an actual uh, active motel. You can rent rooms here. What's amazing about this hotel, this motel is it has been in service since 1935. Robert and Margaret uh, Martin bought this land in 1934 uh, and they built these little motels here uh, in 1935 what is really phenomenal about these little cabins here and we'll, we'll take a look at them we'll get a little closer look here is all of the stonework for these little motels were supplied by local farmers all the local farmers in the area all pitched in and help Robert and Margaret build these little cabins. Something else that's really in, uh, interesting about these cabins is the mortar that was used, they're not necessarily sure what the mixture was uh, of the mortar of its time that they used for these uh, motels, but this mortar is almost indestructible. I mean, if you walk around this motel and you take a look at the stonework and the mortar within, this mo within these motels, it is in phenomenal condition. It looks like it was just built a year ago. It's insane how good a condition these are. And it's original mortar and stone from 1935. So extremely impressive. What's really cool is right next to these motels is you also have the Missouri Barbecue Shack right here beside you. So it is uh, real convenient as far as getting someplace to eat. It's a very nice place. And of course, if you're looking for the Wagon Wheel Motel, you're going to want to drive to Cuba, Missouri. That's right. We're in Cuba, people. So take a look a little bit more uh, of this establishment. If you look in the front up here, at one time, they supplied gas. They had a little, like a little garage or a little service station. Uh, you'll see it up here. So here's the main office of the wagon wheel and again look how good a shape these are in the parking lot here you can tell by the the grade of the concrete look at that that is all old style gravel concrete shit's like you make it a, make a bunker out of it for god's sakes 
But look at how good a condition this is. It's in phenomenal condition. These old gas pumps right here in front, and you can see they, they're not here just for looks. You can see they actually have the proper mounting systems and everything there. And there is the little gas station, the little filling station. Right there to the back. Let's uh, take a closer look here. Looks like we got an old Chevy there, I think. I can't see the emblem. Yep, Chevrolet. This is cool. <laughs> this is really, really neat. Standard oil products. Let's go and check out this old 50, 50s, or excuse me, 40 model Chevy here. Yeah, I mean, this thing's ready to roll. I mean, put a battery in it and throw some gas and hit the road, man. This thing's, it's ready to go. But that is cool. And you can see here down below, let me get a better shot here. But this is what you call an in-ground lift, basically, or an in-ground service pit. This is before they had the big hydraulic lifts. And basically, they dig a trench in the ground, fill it in with concrete, throw some stairs, and you can service your car. Isn't that brilliant? You don't have to worry about hydraulics, you don't have to worry about any of that stuff. You might have to worry about a little bit of flooding. But I'm sure they had drain system and everything put in here at time. Look at that, the gas tank, look at that. Great condition, ready to go. That's really cool. And this is a very well manicured little motel. You can tell there's been a lot of love in the history of this motel. It's been taken care of. It's got a nice little deck out here. So this is a great place to stay. Uh, my understanding is that you have to book these rooms pretty far in advance they get they're booked up because obviously people traveling route 66 want the full experience and they're going to want to stay here and i don't blame them all right so with that let's off to the next stop hey guys well we are at our next stop here uh so we're about seven minutes just down the road uh from the uh, wagon wheel motel here on route 66 obviously and standing here behind me is uh, the world's largest rocking chair. Now, I think now it is the second largest. Somebody had to go one up them. But basically, this was built back in 2006 as a Road 66 uh, roadside attraction for the purpose of just promoting Road 66, obviously, and tourism, etc. And so they set out to build the world's largest rocking chair. And at the time and up until recently, it was it is the second largest rocking chair now. Uh, you know what, but I'm gonna say it's the world's largest because they were the first ones to do it uh, They took the initiative and some a-holes had to one-up them. So, you know what? I'm not gonna give them credit Come and check this one out guys. This is awesome. And also right next to it here I'll switch you can see there's a really cute uh, Farming outpost general store now the farming outpost are the people who commissioned to have this rock and cheer built This is a fully functional general store so you can go in and get supplies and all that type of stuff uh, it is closed today. It's Sunday um, So it is closed, uh, but typically it would be open and you can go in there and pick up some supplies as you need them So here we are uh, like I said just down the road from the wagon wheel motel if you're heading west It's about seven minutes uh, west and uh, be sure to check it out and uh, With that being said, we're gonna head off to our next uh, next location we'll See you then here we are at the next stop here along the historic Route 66, and that is the famous Mule Trading Post uh, here on Route 66. Uh, now it is Sunday uh, right now, so it is not open, so I'm not able to go inside of it, but it is still open. Now there was a totem pole, a very large totem pole, that sat on top of this trading post, 
Uh, that has since been moved, removed from the top and put inside the building uh, just to protect it just because it was more of a historical marker. Uh, so they went ahead and put it inside to preserve it. Uh, this trading post was built uh, here in 1957 uh, and that operator continued to operate it to the 1960s when he was he sold it and the new owner took over and uh, read it, ran it for more than 25 years before eventually selling it again. Um, so if you're in the area here in Missouri and want to stop in and check it out, feel free, but this is an iconic stop here on Route 66. One thing that made this trading post so kind of give it the lore, the, the lore of Route 66 is the uh, owner said that the gawkier, the stranger, the crazier you can make something look, the more attraction it would bring and it, and it actually worked. It brought in a lot of people to check it out. As you can see, I'm here today to check it out. So uh, something de definitely worth checking out. Wish we could have uh, went inside, but unfortunately it's closed. So on to the next stop. See you soon. All right, folks, we are here at our next stop. And it is none other than Uranus. That's right. Don and I have spent some time driving all the way down from Wisconsin to visit Uranus. And what is here in Uranus? Well, rumor has it, the most delicious packed fudge that you can find is here in Uranus. That's right. They have delicious chocolate fudge amongst many other things. All types of fun activities, all types of fun and games can all be found in Uranus. So let's check it out. So we've got this ferocious looking dinosaur sitting here. Welcome you in. And over here we have a nice little T-Rex inviting you for lunch, if you know what I mean. Cool old fire truck, nice little playground, double decker bus, nice little sit down area, a photo booth place here. You can get your face in a picture of various animals, Uranus. Nice little ice cream shop. Looks like we have a tattoo parlor. And this little community here in Uranus has its own police force, as you can see here. Watching traffic. There's a little, there's a gentleman back there. Oh man, you've been back there a long time, buddy. Hello, you okay, man? You all right? Need some water? Man, you need to eat something, buddy. You're looking a little thin. Oh, there's the city jail. A couple of guys up there. Hanging out. Wild animals, mariachi band up on top there. Looks like the city's expanding here. There is all types of fun stuff here. We, we gotta go check out. They got the general store there. That's where I'm sure I can go into Uranus and sample some delicious chocolate fudge. We got a rocket ship over here. All kinds of fun stuff. We got a little side so circus over here. Uh, they have a missing pair of balls. So to go along with Uranus, you can also try to help somebody find their balls. Yeah, so we're gonna go in and check this out. All right, here we are at our next stop, and this is the famous Murger Moss Motel right on Route 66. This road right here is the original old Route 66. And this hotel was built in 1946. 
It originally consisted of seven units, and you can see the units down below. There's actually a lot more here. But the original seven units, uh, much like the Wagon Wheel Motel, actually had uh, garages that were attached to the motel. So you could literally just pull your car up to your motel, into the little garage, uh, and your car would be nice and safe and sound. But this is a go-to stop here on Route 66. As you can see, it is still in operation. And uh, again, it is a very popular stop for a lot of uh, tourists. Uh, you can also see these famous uh, Route 66 signs here that are taking you, showing you the different directions for all of the different uh, Route 66 stops. You've got uh, the Lebanon, Lackley Road 66 Museum, Gemini Giant, Rainbow Bridge, Buckingham Fountain, the Blue Well, Odell Station, Midpoint Cafe, Cadillac Ranch, and on and on and on. Same over here. Then you got Hong Kong, London, Bangkok, Rome, Vancouver, Berlin, Rio de Janeiro, Helsinki, Sydney, and Wellington. So if you're looking to drive from here to any of those places, there you go. Across the street is the famous bowling alley. It is still in operation. It's the Bowmore Lanes, right on Route 66. You can see it's really cool decorated. And again, it is still in operation. All right, folks, here we are at our next stop here in Missouri along Route 66, of course, and this is none other than the Red's Giant Hamburger. Now, Red's Giant Hamburger is important for two reasons. One, it is a, a obviously a historical restaurant along Route 66, which is why we're visiting it. It's been here forever. But a little bit of background the story makes this place really special. Uh, Red's Giant Hamburgers was established in 1947 by a gentleman by the name of Sheridan Red's shortly after World War II. Uh, this restaurant uh, has always been a favorite in the community, but what Red's is known for, and many, many people believe that this is truly the first restaurant in the world to offer a drive-through window. That's right, Red's Giant Hamburgers restaurant opened in 1947 it's thought to be the first restaurant ever to offer a drive-through window and if you visit this uh, restaurant it is awesome inside there are tons and tons of pictures of reds uh, from the past of sheridan red himself his wife uh, and a picture of him standing in the drive-through window serving a hamburger and a coke waving at you uh, showing when he first opened the very first drive-thru. So, in two contexts, this restaurant is famous. One, it's been here since 1947 off Route 66. Two, it is thought to be the first restaurant in the world to offer a drive through window, and they sell giant hamburgers. I had one, and it is good. It is a good burger. Nothing really special, uh, but it's, it's just a really good burger. These good meat, the buns are good, everything about it is good. Uh, home style fries uh, really really friendly staff and uh, quite busy it's been uh, you know this car is here but it's a drive-through so there's been cars just pouring through here as we've been here going through the drive-through so if you're looking for a great hamburger they're also known for a pineapple malt uh, tried that and it is fantastic so come here get yourself a pineapple malt a reds giant double cheeseburger and uh and have a hamburger that's what thought to be the first drive through window restaurant ever started in 1947 and with that on to the next adventure hey one thing i wanted to add as we're here at reds i walked around back i was just checking things out uh they have a really cool uh picture uh montage here of Reds uh, back the original store the original restaurant before it was rebuilt check this out here's Reds this car look familiar 
Look at this old car, flat tires, grass grown all around it. That is the car parked out front, completely restored. And here is, here is a picture of red, Sheridan Red. And here is a picture of the original sign. And here is a picture of the original store where he started selling hamburgers and he created a drive through window and that's where it was thought to be the world's first drive through There it is. World's first drive through Here is a picture of the drive through window he put in. And there's Red waving at you. That's pretty cool. Great history there. All right, guys, on to the next adventure. All right, guys, we are just now entering Kansas. And as you can see, we are on a really old uh, stretch of road of US uh, 66, Route 66. So you can tell this road is old. This is probably one of the older sections of Route 66. Um, you can tell by the bridge work. This is all really old stuff. So this is pretty cool that we're driving down some of the really old sections of US 66. So we are getting ready to hit our next stop. We'll join you back when we get there. All right, we are at our next stop here in Galena, Kansas. Now I tried to find some history of this gas station. Like what was it originally? When was it built? Uh, and everything I found was just basically talking about its current state. So I don't know what gas station it was or when it was built, but my guess is probably in the 1930s or 40s, somewhere in that area. Uh, most of these gas stations that are designed like this have been around in the 1940s or so, uh, but I don't know. But what's significant about this particular stop here in Galena is not necessarily just this uh, gas station, but what this gas station inspired. Uh, many of you have seen the movie Cars and you know a lot of the characters in that movie. Well, that movie came about by the director and animator of that movie visiting this location as he was checking out Route 66 and he came to this location and he saw that record right there. The one to the left of us here. And it gave him the idea of the movie Cars and the character that uh, was the little tow truck in the movie. Now, I've, honestly, I've never seen Cars because I'm not, you know, a little kid necessarily. I'm not saying if you've seen it, you are a little kid. I'm just saying I haven't seen it. But I know that uh, there's a lot of different characters, famous characters, and one of them was the tow truck. It was that particular tow truck that inspired the little tow truck in the movie. And so here we are in Galena with the tow truck. This one right here is the one that inspired the character in the movie. So he was here visiting this location. He saw this little tow truck and he thought, huh, interesting. I could make a movie about that. And here is a little plaque that talks about it. It reads, let me get this out of the way here. The inspiration for the Tow Martyr 1951 International. In Galena, Kansas, we found a lonely old tow truck that most folks would pass without a second glance. Our head of the story, Joe Remph, however, saw beyond the rust and broken down parts, he saw the inspiration for the character, Mater. They soon became kindred spirits. Joe gave Mater his warmth, his sense of fun, his humble and generous spirit, and his capacity to see and bring out the best in others. So, there you have it. This little tow truck inspired the little record mater, the movie Cars. And there is the real life mater. Not the animated version of him, but that's him right there. And it was this guy that brought him to life. 
Isn't that cool? And check this out. Uh, it's hard to make out. Looks like it originally served in Joplin. I can see like the last four digits of the phone number, 2200. But I can't really make out this name right here. It's Sutton, maybe? It's T-A-N-N-O. You maybe it's it's hard to make that out. I can't make that out. Shiny interior there. I love interiors of these old trucks. I said that earlier. But check out the boom on this thing, man. It's this thing was serious. He wasn't messing around with this baby. That is one big boom for a record. And then here is uh Mater, tow mater. Still got the motor in them. I mean, this thing actually looks like it's all there. I got the radiator, the alternator, the oil pump, battery, distributor. This thing probably runs. Got spark plugs, wires, fuel pump, hoses, all new clamps. I bet this thing runs. <laughs> and then of course we got this old fire tr fire truck. It's a howl. It's the company that made it. It's a Chevrolet. Look, it's definitely probably from the early 1970s. And it's pretty complete too. I mean, you got the the hose pumps. Hardly any rust on this thing. Eh, got a little dry rot up there. Got the hose uh, reels. Place for fire extinguisher. This thing is in pretty good shape overall. There's all your pump controls, pressure gauges. It's all, this is all in good order. I'd be one to bet this thing runs too. Or if they use them in parades or anything like that, maybe. But yeah, here we are. A little sign up there's Canotex. K A N T E X. Canotex. That gives me a little bit more to go on. I have to look that up. Can I text? I didn't even see that on the on the <laughs> on the fuel pumps. So, really cool place. There you have it. All right. So on to the next stop. Also, while visiting Galena, make sure you stop by the the little uh, stand here where you're gonna see. Uh, Luigi's little car wash and you got the car up on this the stand there the police car and then make sure before you leave you stop by and sign the board and if you're ever looking to see where we signed I didn't have the best marker but down to the bottom left you see Don Brian Bronson and Layla Milwaukee 
Here we are at our next stop, and this is the famous Rock Cafe here in Stroud, Oklahoma. Now, this ho this uh, little cafe was originally built in 1936 when uh, they were actually uh, building uh, this section of Route 66. And the stones that were used to build this uh, cafe were actually stones unearthed by the construction companies as they were building Route, 16, Route 66. So all of the stonework of this building came from the ground that Route 66 was built on. So I think that is an interesting tie to history. Also, the uh, owner of this restaurant, uh, the name slips me, Sally I think is her name. She is the inspiration behind the Porsche for the movie Cars. Now this uh, cafe actually experienced a pretty severe fire and was uh, restored and rebuilt back in 2006. Now the stone walls and everything are all original and a lot of the other building is still original but there was some, some fire damage inside that had to be repaired. And then of course here's the infamous Rock Cafe sign. Isn't that really cool? I'd love to see this at night. The establishment was here in 1936. The Rock Cafe. On to the next stop. Hey everybody. Well, we are on one of the older stretch of Route 66 and it's basically abandoned. Uh, you can see that there's just certain sections that it goes down and then it kind of comes to a dead end down here at the end of the road. So there's just sections of it, but you can see this is really, really old, probably from the 30s. But this is the original old Route 66. Over here is the probably the later version, 1940s or 50s. But this is the old Route 66. Pretty cool. So on to the next stop. So here we are at our next spot. This is the uh, Totem Pole uh, uh, State Park here. Uh, this is a, uh, originally it was established as a, or excuse me, a museum, not a park. It's a Totem Pole Museum. But this was private land that was owned uh, by a gentleman by the name of Ed, who in 1937 started to build these totem poles out of recognition and, and paying homage to the local tribes within this area. Uh, in in this total park here, uh, they used 128 tons of sand, cement, and gravel to make these. And this is the tallest totem pole in the world. It stands 90 feet tall, and it's 54 feet wide. It's all handmade. 
by this gentleman. Features like nine different tribes. Homage to their homeland. Incredible. There's another one over here that shows the different leaders, the different chiefs of the local tribes. I mean, that has to be 20 feet tall. And there's more throughout, but this is incredible. I mean, that was handmade. The largest totem pole in the world. That is pretty amazing. There's also a gift shop here. It's all maintained through donations only. Uh, but this is also built in the same design as some of the early primitive Native American uh, housing designs, octagon style housing. So if you're in this, uh, this area, you want to see the world's largest totem pole, this is where you find it. All right, guys, on to the next. All right, we are here at our next spot. This is the uh, really famous blue well that was uh, hand built by a private citizen. He uh, it took him from 1970 to 1972 to complete it. It's got over 2,900 hours built into it. And it uh, was all handmade. He actually mixed all the concrete using five gallon buckets and hand built this. He built it for his wife to celebrate their marriage and over time it just became a roadside attraction and he didn't mind people stopping by and looking at it at one time kids were able to swim in the pond and they were able to slide down the fins of the well uh, they don't allow swimming anymore uh, and it which is kind of a shame it's the big deal but I guess there's to preserve things uh, she was recently uh, painted and refurbished not too long ago by private, private citizens who kind of volunteered their time and money to uh, restore her. And so here she sits, the Blue Well. Very cool. 2,900 hours of work. All handmade using five gallon buckets of concrete. That's impressive. All right. That's very cool. Off to the next site. All right, here we are at our next stop. This is the famous Bucks on 66. Now this is more of a tourist attraction. Now this gas station was an original Primco gas station built in the 1950s. It sat vacant for many years and the community decided to come together since it's on Route 66 and restore it. And they set up the Buck Adam Space Cowboy. This is a muffler man stands about 20 feet tall if you guys remember the old muffler mans that used to be on top of I believe it was maybe the Midas mufflers or maybe it was called muffler man mufflers but uh, these were used in advertisement and you will find I think three of these maybe four but three for sure of these along the route now Gemini Giant uh, in Wilmington was not available uh, they are they are moving its location so we didn't get a chance to capture that one but we've got this one and there's one in, in Atlanta uh, that we also saw. So this is a really cool little gas station. So this was a, an active 1950s Primco gas station along Route 66 and it is a uh, historical landmark along the route and definitely a place to stop. It does have a gift shop, a gift shop and it is open. So you can go in there and check things out. As you can see, it is an official roadside attraction for Route 66. So very cool, very exciting. Also, if you come to this gas station, just to your left, you're going to see the famous metal gold sign.
So we're gonna probably try to come down here uh, tonight and see if we can get a shot of it at night lit up. And then we'll kind of talk more about the history of that as well. So here we are at Buck 66, the old 1950s Primco gas station. Very cool. On to the next stop. Here we are at our next stop and one of our uh, last stops here in Tulsa. This is the Driller Man or the Golden Driller Man. And you can find him here at the Golden Driller Plaza here in Tulsa. He stands 76 feet tall. He weighs 43,500 pounds. He was originally uh, brought here during the 1953 uh, Petroleum Expo that was taking place here. And it brought a lot of attention. And because of the fanfare that it had, uh, they ended up bringing it back here in 1969. And then eventually it was uh, put here and left permanently. So if you want to come and see a 76 foot tall driller man, this is where you can do it, here in Tulsa, Oklahoma at the uh, Expo Center. On to the next stop. Well, we finally made it home. Uh, it was a long drive home. I mean, we drove straight through home because we were making all the stops on the way down and just drove straight back, obviously. We stopped at a couple little places that we didn't get to on the way down, but it was a fantastic trip. If you're a person that likes road trips, if you're a person that likes um, pop culture, uh, pop culture history, Americana history, uh, folk history, uh, then you're going to love this trip. Route 66 is a fun drive. A lot of it is on I-55 because they just basically built the interstate on top of the old Route 66, but there's still plenty of old Route 66 to drive on. Uh, once you get to Missouri, from Missouri on down through Oklahoma, and I'm guessing pretty much the rest of the way there is lots of opportunities to drive on the original route 66 path and it's so full of so many things and we didn't even get a chance to stop at all of the things to check out unfortunately just not enough time there's so much to see so many little gift shops and antique shops and just so many really cool things to stop and look at it just wasn't enough time. It would have taken us 20 hours to get from here to Tulsa if we'd have stopped at everything. But we did stop at a lot. And this video doesn't even cover all of it. But we just thought we'd throw this video together so you can take the trip along with us, see some of the things we got to see, and to see how much that trip, how enjoyable that trip was. So with that, thank you so much for joining us on this trip. And I look forward to your comments or any questions you may have. Until our next adventure. We'll talk to you later.